about a game. It's a red skin. What's up y'all? It is Tasha. I am here with another video. Thank you so much for stopping into my channel. If you are new, welcome. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and comment in the comment section below. If you are not new, welcome back. Y'all already know how I get down with my thoughts on these shows and y'all see from the title already. If you have watched this season of Love is Blind, child, it is a complete mess. I'm just going to put the disclaimer out there. So the, the little quick recap we're going to do on episodes one through four is going to be that because I debated with myself of if I wanted to review this show and then y'all will see later on in the video with a clip I'm going to insert as to what triggered me to go ahead and review this doggone show. Um, so I'm not going to go all into the details of one through four. If you are here for episodes five, six, and seven, you already know what happened in episodes one, two, three, and four. That probably made all of us pissed off. Okay. So just real, real quick. I enjoyed Carter. I thought he was the real MVP of the first few episodes. Like he was the realest one out here lounging on the couch, his belly all out with his shirt halfway button. Carter, I was here for it, okay? Um, second, I'm not sure what's going on with the black men in Love is Blind and their hair, but I really want them to get it together, okay? One of these seasons, I really want y'all to get it together, all right? So I'm just gonna go through real quick the couples that we have. Um, so in the pod, we had Lydia and Izzy. They connected for a hot minute, mostly because I believe they both of Hispanic descent or Mexican descent, something like that, child. Um, he wasn't really feeling her she was really feeling him once he broke it off with her she really had a whole emotional breakdown it was really sad i think she was just more sad because she just wanted somebody to pick her okay but anyway we're gonna move on from the two of them because they didn't actually pick each other then we have lydia and milton they connected because they're both a little bit nerdy they both like rocks it's a seven almost a seven year age between the two of them but they end up getting together and choosing each other okay and then we have a side partnership of lydia and uche and all i gotta say is ghetto both of them should have been kicked off the show all right then we have uche and alia um which <laughs> these two okay so first off uche he's just a little bit robotic to me like he's nothing is really exciting about him i don't even think he is all that cute child but He's a lawyer and I feel like every time he talks, he gives off lawyer vibes like he's in the courtroom. He's at work. Everything has to be so professional and laid out. I apologize if y'all can hear my long guy. He is here to cut my grass. I'm hoping it's not being picked up too much in the video, <laughs> but I'm sorry if it is. But bottom line for me is Uche does not give me the vibes that real um, black women are his number one choice. And I will just leave it at that. OK. So we then had um, a situation with Johnny and Izzy. Um, my opinion, Izzy let her on. She felt hard and then he ended up dropping her. And also Johnny's a little bit petty in the, in the meantime. OK, and then we have Johnny and Chris. Chris, again, he's another MVP of the show because Chris chose himself after Johnny tried to slide on back. After Izzy dropped her, she tried to come on back through the back door and hook up with Chris because she just wanted to have a connection with somebody. And I'm happy that Chris chose himself. Although I think they would have been a good match for one another. Johnny, you blew it by falling for Izzy too fast, too quick and believing what he said. OK. Um, Taylor and JP child it is boring it's all I got to say all we hear is sugar foot sugar babe sugar pop sugar honey sugar honey iced tea like that that's all we hear from two of them oh my god I want to throw up all right and then we have Izzy and Stacy who actually ends up getting together as well um, Izzy basically like Stacy in my opinion because she's fun they really don't talk about anything in depth and she has a hard time opening up but here we are with them moving on with this process so that was episodes one through four let's move on to episode five y'all because this right here <laughs> this is why I got upset so the episode opens up I'm not gonna go play by play either I'm just trying to summarize what happens in the episodes and the high points for the most part so after we leave episode four, where we know the little producer or whatever got on the mic to let Uche know that Aaliyah has left and decided not to move forward. Uche then goes back into the men's quarter and he tells the group that Aaliyah wasn't there and that she left. And he's sitting here talking to them as if he's completely baffled as to why this has happened. And he has no clue as to why she would just up and leave like that. 
Uche, stop playing in our faces, okay? Um, so he finally gets around um, to saying a comment of, she must have seen Lydia get engaged. And of course the other guys, other than Milton, because he knows the other guys are looking like, well, what they got to do with anything, okay? And then he comes out and lets them know that he dated Lydia before um, they got into the pods. And Izzy O f boy behind had the nerve to say well that's shitty of Aaliyah to not even give you closure no it was shitty of Uche to even not tell these people from the very beginning that he recognized because he said he found out on day one that Lydia was there so every woman therefore that you should have interacted with that you should have led with that and stop trying to be deceitful and judgmental on what other people got going on okay but here's what I'm gonna insert where I went on my little rant when I was in episode five, that made me decide I'm going to review this MF and show. So I'm going to insert it here. Y'all, this right here is ghetto. And I am aware that this is ghetto. And I apologize. I will probably fill this video with some more. But I just need to get my thoughts out. Because I am on episode five of Love is Blind. I am only 10 minutes in. And when I say I want to choke the out of Uche, I want to to choke him the way he just had these producers call Aaliyah to see if he could talk to her because she just left without saying anything Aaliyah gets on this phone and explains that it really has to do with Lydia and her and Lydia got into it and she just things changed how she felt about him although she said she still loves him girl stop it but he gets on and he's like, how are you letting somebody come in between us? We would never be able to have a marriage. Marriage is about working through the hard stuff. You have to talk about it like, oh my God, I can't believe you're letting somebody come in the middle of us. Uche, when she told you she cheated two years ago, you was all on her case, okay? You didn't tell her about somebody that you smashed three months ago that has befriended this girl in this experience. And now you are talking about her. And then she... Aaliyah brings up the greatest point of how I know when y'all slept together three months ago that Lydia didn't look in your phone and see you apply for the show and she applied for the show. Because I don't understand how the both of y'all here at the same time. And I am here for it too, Aaliyah. I don't understand how both of y'all are in this experience at the same time. And when I think about it, I don't feel like Lydia was that shocked that it was Uche on the other side of the wall when they showed that flashback. Like... Uche might not be in on it, but I definitely have given a strong side eye to Lydia because I believe Lydia knew that man was going to be on this show and knew it was only a few black women in there. So she probably befriended all the black women that was in there. And then now it's a problem that she don't want to talk to you no more. And he's up here. I'm such an idiot. I'm such a fool. I knew I was going to fall for the girl and open myself up and get heartbroken. I don't even want to talk to her anymore. I don't even want her phone number. Itch, you the one one of the producers to call her so you could talk to her because you needed some type of closure. Now you're going to flip the script and gaslight her, act as if, I don't, I don't have anything to say because no, this would never work. If I'm supposed to be your husband, we would never even get there. You don't deserve to be the husband for nobody. And Aaliyah, if you don't get off this phone and stop crying and snotting and saying you love this man and not make these decisions so hastily, girl, I'm ready to find your people and call your people and ask them what is wrong with you right now. Because do you see the type of man he is right now? You cannot even think for a second that this is not the type of man he's going to be if you marry him, honey. What he is showing you now is exactly how he is going to act as a husband. Child, I am ghetto here on the floor because I was <laughs> my TV is paused. I am still watching the episode. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill this in because I've been debating if, if I'm going to talk about Love is Blind. And child, 10 minutes into episode 5, I got to get it off my chest. I got to get it off my chest. So we're going to come back. I'll give a quick, quick, quick recap of episodes one through four because we already hear episode five. And once I watch these next three episodes, I'm going to finish the rest of this video. Okay. <laughs> Y'all have fun with that. <laughs> I was so upset. I was so upset. But anyway, we now see also Lydia and Milton. They are finally meeting. The walk up with them is a little bit slow and awkward at first. And then he ends up picking her up. They kiss. Then they kiss. And then they kiss, and then they kiss, and they kiss, and they kiss, and that's it. They just keep kissing, y'all. He says she's beautiful. She um, tells him that he is handsome. And 
He definitely looks a little bit better with a little bit of a haircut, the mustache being trimmed a little bit. I, this is much a little bit of an improvement, child. Um, but after accepting the ring, she tells him, she's like, I knew you would like me. I mean, look at me. Lydia, girl, stop it. Yes, you are beautiful, but everything else that you have shown us about yourself gives us pause, okay? It's not your looks that give us pause. It's everything else, especially you befriending the girl that you knew your ex was trying to pursue. Okay. Um, and by the way, Milton has let us know that he is 6'7", child. Tall AF. But my man is 6'6", six, six, <laughs> so I ain't mad at it, all right? I love a good tall man, all right? Anyway, now we have our three couples off to Cancun. Taylor and JP are in their room talking. It's awkward AF because they really don't know how to be normal around each other. They just keep kissing to just kind of break the silence and so that their lips will be occupied and they don't really have to talk, child. And then we see Izzy and Stacy. Izzy just continues to look like he's ready to pounce Stacy at this point in the process. Um, it seems like he's physically attracted to her, but I'm not sure if there is an emotional and mental connection between the two. He just wants to smash. Um, we move on to Liddy and Milton. They are still kissing and kissing and kissing, but she compliments his hair and then tells him he has tiny ears and then says he has a small face, he has a big nose and he has a big mouth. And I was like, so all the features that make him black, that's what we gonna do, Lydia? I didn't, I didn't wanna go there, but that's what we gonna do, Lydia? Okay. Um, she then says putting the voice with the physical aspect really hasn't been easy and I translated that as I know I said he was cute but I really don't think he's as attractive as I say he was in the very beginning either way she is ready to smash him in this instance okay so JP and Taylor they are back on my TV and it's still hella awkward at this point of the episode I'm getting secondhand embarrassment for them um, JP at this point, I'm like, is he socially awkward or does he really not like her like that? Because I was confused of it. It seems like he's socially awkward, but also if he don't really like her, he really don't have much to say. So I didn't know where he was at this point in the episode, but we find out, I believe, okay? Then we see that um, uh, Milton and Lydia are in the shower bare bone and I was like clearly they got it popping but Netflix did we really need to see their bare behinds in the shower I could have went my entire life without seeing that okay um and then same with Izzy and Stacy Izzy is just trying his hardest to get in Stacy's pants any chance that he can okay when they finally wake up the next morning we see that uh, Milton and Lydia are in the bed clearly looking like they got it on last night there's a few times where Milton kind of reminds me that he's 24 years old and this was definitely one of the ones when he was in the bed with the whole hoodie on. Uh, my teenager be in this house and in the bed with a hoodie on. That's something that kids do. Yeah, he's definitely 24, okay? Um, but again, they make it obvious that they smash. Um, we switch over to Izzy and Stacy. They also have gotten it in. And she's, they're just like, oh, it's so easy and it's just so comfortable and everything just feels so natural. It's been one night, okay? And y'all got it popping that one night. So yes, everything's gonna feel amazing, all right? They then show JP and Taylor once again, y'all. And I swear watching them is like really watching paint dry. It is just really difficult to watch them in any scene. Um, he says that really when she, you know, talks about them having conversations, he's just awkward and he says that you know basically she can do it she can carry the conversation that's not how conversations work conversations are back and forth interaction sometimes i started sometimes you started but how do you expect somebody to try to live their whole life being able to carry the conversations for y'all jb like there were a lot of times she kind of just left an awkward silence there and Previously, like early on, I was like, this just feels so cringeworthy. But then I wasn't mad at her for leaving the awkward silence because it's like, I'm just going to leave it here and make it uncomfortable for both of us because I'm not going to be the one holding on these conversations all the dang on time. So if you can't hold anything, we're just going to be sitting here looking at each other. You looking at me, I'm looking at you. And what else is going on? Okay. I just don't understand how JP is a firefighter. Well, I imagine if you are a firefighter, you got to have great communication skills, talking to your coworkers as y'all trying to put out fires and ish, but yet you can't effectively communicate in a relationship. 
uh, okay, but she's afraid she made the wrong decision and I'm like, walk away, Taylor. As a matter of fact, run away from this man. Lydia and Milton, they are at the pool and guess what y'all? They talking about sex and they still kissing. Child, to me, Lydia just wanna get her rocks off, okay? Um, anyway, later on, all the couples meet up at the beach. Lydia says that she loves Milton to the moon and beyond because of course she now sees Izzy, but says Izzy is the typical guy that she would go for. Lydia, are you lying to us or are you lying to yourself? I'm imagining you lying to yourself because the rest of us don't believe what you actually saying. We know you find Izzy attractive and you are just trying to overcompensate for how you feel about Milton because Izzy is now here, child. But um, Izzy, t Izzy says that Lydia is also pretty. They step away, they talk a little bit. He tells her that he's very happy for her. He still cares for her, but he really doesn't want there to be bad blood. He tells her that he cut her off to pursue Johnny because then Johnny was the number one. And then he just lets her know that kind of Stacy came out of nowhere and then he developed a stronger connection with her. Now, I, Izzy confused me because Izzy just said, I cut it off with you because Johnny was the number one connection. And then you flipped and say, because the, the connection got stronger with Stacy, that's why you had to step away. Izzy continued to give F boy vibes and I'm gonna keep standing on that okay so then we see Stacy and Taylor they talk a little bit Stacy asks what she really liked about JP and basically Taylor has nothing deep to say girl she, but she lets Stacy know that maybe she made a mistake and saying yes she's blaming herself a little bit for actually saying yes to him now Taylor you did not get enough intel before you decided you wanted to move forward with JP but JP also needs to step it up honey if he wants to be with you um we see the other two couples are pretty much all over each other jp and taylor is pretty much like the third wheel at this point and then she is keeps confronting him about being awkward and then he has the nerve to get upset that she keeps telling her well dude it still keeps being awkward because you ain't talking he says he doesn't know what he could say or do to make things better and i said do or say something jp that's the point that we are pro that's the problem we got you don't say ish that's why y'all are here okay but anyway, Taylor girl, at this point of the episode, I want you to leave JP in his red, white, and blue attire right there in Mexico and you head on back to the house, okay? We're gonna jump in on episode six. Um, so Izzy and Stacy, they continue to get it in and get it popping. JP still on the mute challenge. Lydia is trying to tell Milton what to wear already so that they can match child. This whole back and forth situation they had in the bathroom felt like a mother and son interaction and I was cringing the whole time. Um, JP and Taylor, we see them going on a little four wheeler ride and then they have a picnic and she asks him, so how are you feeling? And he says, <laughs> sweaty, sir, she did not mean literally how you are feeling. She meant, how are you feeling about the two of y'all and where y'all are at at this point in the relationship? JP, read the room. Like, but he tells her that she needs to show her freckles more. I said, this man right here is dry, okay? Like, but again, we didn't know it at this point, but this was another clue as to how he feels about her, saying she need to show her freckles more. If Y'all take note of that. If y'all saw, of course, this whole episode, take note and remember what he said. But he has the nerve to tell her, don't give up on him. Boy, bye. I would have been already back in these United States messing around with you, okay? Um, we then see Izzy and Stacy. They go play mini golf and Stacy mine is in the gutter the entire time, child. Um, I'm just like, when was the last time you got some? Because right now you acting like Izzy got the best peeing on earth. OK, I don't know. I don't want to know. But I guess if it's good for you, then go home and have at it. All right. But it seems like she's in love with the physical aspect of Izzy. Um, and he kind of really, really likes her. And I'm not exactly mad at it because I don't care for Izzy. So <laughs> if she is just using him to get her rocks off, more power to you, Stacey. Get what you can get, girl. Why the getting is good. Um, Milton and Lydia, they're aside, outside. They're talking about the stars and stuff. Why he puts about a pound of pasta in his mouth. They also talk about Lydia being bossy and she is. So I believe this is definitely going to be a problem for them. Um, so at this point in the season, we have one couple who can't even communicate and the other two couples just want to smash all the time. All right. That's where we stand. So next we go back to JP 
and Taylor. And this is where it gets good with the two of them, okay? So please bear with me as I look at my notes to make sure that we got this all the way together, okay? But they're in the bed, they talking about how awkward it has been. And JP tells her she's just ha she has to just get past it. Sir, how is she supposed to get past it if you just keep being awkward? I, I don't understand how you're supposed to move forward. But he continues to tell her, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying. And she says, I know you're trying. How is he trying? If this is him trying, y'all just need to give up because this is not it right here, okay? So at this point, Taylor becomes fed the F up with him and she is telling him he's still awkward, he still won't talk, and this is really the first time he's ever talked to her or really had any communication with her like that outside of the pods. She asks him what changed after the pod and he tells her that she tries to present herself the best that she could, i.e. in the pods, and if she would have presented herself the way she is now with no makeup, it would have been better. How does that change the person she was in the pods when you couldn't even see her, JP? You're not making no sense. And then he says it feels like she was fake. And that is why he's really not communicating with her. And it is because she wore makeup at the reveal, which is driving their whole communication off. JP, that is BS. That is BS because she only had makeup on that very first time y'all met. And of course, she's going to have makeup on. Like, oh God, this man get on my nerves. And then he tells her that she presented fake stuff, i.e. the makeup and lashes, and he had makeup all over his jacket. JP. She tells him that she wanted to feel and look her best for the first time. And that's what women do. That's what women do when we are going on a, having a special occasion. He said when he first saw her, he wondered if this was going to be an everyday thing. JP, it's been like four or five days. If you say you only saw her in makeup that first time at the reveal, you, that is your point is a mute point because it's not an everyday thing. If she has not worn it every day, y'all have been in Mexico, sir. Make it make sense. Um, but he says that he just wants to see her bare face. And that's really where the miscommunicate. Well, the non communication came from. And she keeps saying, but you never saw my face like you never to say the makeup was a lot. You never had a bare face to compare it to when you for, first saw her. And again, why are you still complaining if she's giving you a bare face every day since then, JP? It, it's just not making sense at all. But he says the reveal started the awkwardness. Um, so essentially he's acting like he could have gotten past it, but he has not. And then he tells her, just don't wear makeup. Like a lot of women would just be happy to hear their man say, just don't wear makeup. And she says, no, I'm going to wear makeup if I want to wear makeup. And I said, that is right, girl. Who do you think you are to tell her don't wear makeup? Like, have you looked at you, JP? No offense, but have you looked in the mirror at you? Okay. Um, but anyway, he starts cursing at her. Um, JP is like, you no, sorry. But he starts cursing at her. She gets upset and she's like, you know what? I am not staying here tonight. I'm just going to leave. He says, great. But then she tells him before she leaves, she appreciates him talking to her that night. And I said, girl, the only reason you should be happy is because now you have a valid reason to leave is behind. Like other than that, I don't need to talk to you ever again in my life. All right. But anyway, JP is showing us exactly why he had to date people from behind a wall. OK, that's all I got to say about it. But he said they say all that to each other. They still hug before they leave for the night. When I tell you, I would have packed all of my ish and would have been on the I-10 by 10. I know they are in Mexico and that that line doesn't apply. But every chance I get to say that line, I'm going to say it. But I would have packed my things. I would have been at the airport. Give me the first thing y'all have going back to Texas. OK, I'll figure out how to get back home. Just get me to Texas and I'll figure the rest out. OK. Um, but all the couples get ready to go back home to Houston. Um, Stacy has to let us know that their room stinks because of their clothes. And I'm like, yuck, did y'all shower the whole time y'all were there? Because it should not stink that much if y'all were, you know, constantly refreshing yourselves. Um, Milton lets us know yet again that he's a 24 year old man, because while Lydia says the first person she's ready to call when she gets her phone back is her mama. He says he's ready to hit the homies up in the group chat. OK, the group chat is fitting to be lit. All right. 
JP tells um, JP and Taylor meet. JP tells Taylor that he really wants to work on their issues because it was really him. Taylor is like, okay, now what else is going on? So I already knew at this point, Taylor baby was checked out, okay? She says in the pod, she thought she could spend the rest of her life with him, but now he isn't the person she felt she fell in love with because it feels forced. And really the makeup argument was an excuse. And I was like, and it was. She tells him that she doesn't think they should be engaged or live together and she is done. And I applauded her in this moment. Like, girl, there you go. It's never too late to choose yourself. But also I said, this season told last season, hold my beer. Y'all thought y'all brought the drama. We, <laughs> we gonna really show y'all how it's done already. Okay. But I was so proud of Taylor for standing up for herself because I feel like he tried to brush it under the rug. I feel like it wasn't a big deal. We can get past it. I love you, sugar. Like, whatever. But Taylor, I mean, yeah, Taylor was like, I am seeing these red flags and I am not going to ignore the red flags. I mean, they might be red, white and blue messing around with JP, but you see the red in them where it mean, that means you need to exit stage left. She gives back the ring. He has this stupid smirk on his face and they are done. Well, at least what we see now. I don't know what's going to happen in the upcoming episodes. So we come back to Houston with only two couples now. We got Izzy and Stacy and Milton and Lydia. They're going to be moving into a shared apartment and the weddings are 21 days away. Milton jumps back into work because he says he's the youngest um, engineer at his job. So work life balance is really off sometimes. And then they realize that sometimes they may have um, really alternating schedules. So it may be hard to see each other. Stacy and Izzy they talk and her family is fully on board with her um, getting married to him. It seems like his family is a little bit more concerned and she's worried that's going to change his mind. Um, it sounds like when he talks to his mom, she had some reservations and the reservations honestly seem to be more about Izzy on if he was sure he was ready. You wanted to commit like this. So I was like, mama, what is you trying to tell us? Is you trying to tell us the engagement that was on with Izzy broke up because of him? Because that's what I'm feeling like. I'm feeling like it was Izzy that he can't commit and he ran away. And I'm ready for bring mama on the show. Please let's show her because she about to give us all the tea. OK, he continues to give me F boy vibes. <laughs> Liddy and Milton go to his apartment and immediately she starts calling out what she does does and does not like about his apartment more so what she doesn't like um milton apartment is definitely giving college dorm room but girl what did you expect he's a 24 year old bachelor and then we found out he has a roommate child of course the apartment is gonna get bare but child, they just not gonna work out because him being 24 and asking his roommate if they want to get liddy and liddy is like get liddy what is that is that short for my name what's happening here and then them talking about pokemon child it is definitely given we don't really have nothing in common but the sex is good that's what it is given right now so izzy and stacy then go to her house and he's already planning to make it their house all right izzy um one thing i will say is stacy you cute and all girl but can you please stop wearing all of this blush or bronzer or whatever it is that you are wearing and for the love of God, take it a little bit easy on these brows, honey. Like it's just sometimes it's giving real harsh in the face with the makeup. Okay. Now this is probably what JP could actually complained about if he had gotten with <laughs> if he had gotten with Stacy instead of Taylor, but whatever. But they talk about money um, and how they save because she's actually in the process of reno renovating her three-story home. Izzy says he likes to go 50-50 as she was talking about maybe if something goes wrong with the house and he's living there, um, what they should do. I can agree with him on, on the 50-50 of maybe, you know, like house repairs unless y'all, if y'all don't have some sort of joint account that y'all are both putting money in or the expense is so large that y'all kind of need to reevaluate the finances. But then she was like, even on dates and he's like, yeah, we can both throw our car down, sir. You not fitting to be my husband and we going 50 50 on no dates. We are not doing that. Not at all, sir. And Stacy was like, you know, no, you should pay for the dates. I think there should be again, if there's not a joint account involved where y'all have that y'all will take that out for the dates, then it should just be y'all sharing the expense. Yes, maybe the man is going to do it more often than the woman, but also as women, we can also pay and treat our man every now and then. Okay. 
Um, but it looks like in this whole instance, Johnny may have been right about him about talking about, you know, he ain't got no money, his credit bad. <laughs> We thought Johnny was just being petty, but Johnny might have been on to something, okay, with him. Um, Stacy, you might end up being a sugar mama for Izzy because as she continues to talk about, you know, wanting luxury and having a nice vacations and really going to nice restaurants, Izzy has a look of concern on his face and he looks completely uninterested. And he's like, I can I never really dated somebody that you know, once all that, I kind of just dated regular girls. Well, she ain't regular or basic to the other women. That She wants her luxury and then she clearly can afford it on her own. So you're not about to come down here and then lower her standards of living, sir. That's just not going to happen. All right. But she says they really need to go over all the uncomfortable financial stuff before spending a life with someone. And I definitely do agree. And I definitely can see now that Stacy is giving Izzy a little bit of a side eye. Like I'm still going to kiss you and you still cute, but I'm going to keep my good eye on you because I'm not sure how this is all going to work out. If basically, you know, I got money, my daddy got money. And if, you know, things go sour, I can always be here to take care of us. Like that ain't gonna fly, all right? As this episode wraps up, it is 18 days until the wedding. And we are here with Aaliyah looking gorgeous with her little wash and go or twist out that she has. And she is meeting the a-hole, Uchi. She thanks him. She starts the conversation out by thanking him for being willing to meet with her. And she regrets leaving him like that. And she does love him. All I could do was sigh because Aaliyah, where are your people at? I'm going to ask you again, where are your people at? Because why are you out here acting like this towards this man that ain't even worth it, child? She tells him that her heart is still in his hands and she would marry him and she really wants to be with him. Aaliyah just laid all her cards out on a table for a man that does not deserve to know all of her cards are out on the table. Yeah, I was so mad at this child because I'm, he deserves none of this. He deserves absolutely none of this that she is giving him right now. It's almost like she's begging and I hate her for doing this. Aaliyah, we were all rooting for you. <laughs> All right, y'all, I apologize if the lighting is different. I didn't have time early to finish watching that last episode, so I am just now recording episode seven, but let's go ahead and jump into it because this video is about to be long enough trying to cover episodes one through seven of Love is Bond, y'all. So we, of course, know Aaliyah and Uche. They are meeting up. She says that the emotional darts, doubt started with her when Lydia gave her all the extra information. She tells him about the comments that Lydia was making about the house, the car, the dog, the stuff she did not even ask her for and says she doesn't feel like it was safe for her to be emotion, emotional with Uche because of how much he judged her of course when she told him that he had cheated before you can't blame her for that but he basically tells her um he would be losing either way depending on how um no matter what he felt because he would lose if he actually looked like he was taken up for Lydia and then he would lose if he's acted like he was talking bad about her because then it's kind of looking at him like well if he will do that to her he will do that to me this is probably the one thing I can agree, agree with Uche on is that this was a lose-lose situation because you would look some kind of way if you was calling, you know, Lydia names or whatever. And if you was taking up for her, we'd be giving you the side eye. But then also, do we really care about Lydia's feelings that much? I don't, but let's move on. Um, he said he found out that after they were dating that she was invading his privacy and he said it was not going to work and she just kept reaching out to him so child now i'm really thinking if lydia crazy self knew this man was coming on the show and she somehow some way found a way to get on this show but he said they broke it off and then they gave it some time they reconnected um he found out that she was actually i guess going through his instagram friend list and going to some of the people that he follow and actually watching their stories um and i was just like yeah that's weird but also do you only have like five followers or something or five people that you are following and all these people know you because who has the time to see who is actually looking at their stories every single day day after day week after week like who is really is is people really doing that or is there some way to track that on instagram so you don't physically have to do it maybe i'm just not in the loop but i'm like Really, I don't know anybody who's really looking to see every day who is looking at their stories that they have posted. But 
okay um then he said she showed up at his house and she took a picture um in his driveway and sent it to him and texted him i see you okay uchi i'm i'm trying to believe you because i don't think i think lydia is missing some screws and she just may be a little bit sketchy I, i'm really trying here but some of this stuff just is it seems a little far-fetched but if this is true lydia is bad ish crazy that's all i got to say okay um, and then Uchi says she was in a bad place and grieving. So he felt bad that she was in a bad place. And he said, well, now we're going to get back together yet again. That's where you messed up yet again. If this lady did all of these things that you were saying, but because she was grieving, she was in a bad spot. You felt the need to be, I guess, Batman or Superman to come to her rescue. Like why? If she had done all these things and gave you all these red flags, why would you then put yourself out of the way to then try to be there to comfort her like that's not your responsibility you should have felt comfortable to just break things off and leave things off but he said once she i guess got a new circle of friends and she felt okay mentally and emotionally he was able to then let her go Aaliyah said that she also felt some kind of way about the comments that he was making about her and Milton because y'all know in the pause, Uche was acting like, oh, Milton is young. Milton isn't really ready for this, although Lydia is, and he's just going to break her heart or whatever he said. Um, and then um, Aaliyah lets us know that Lydia also told the other girls that she had a feeling that somebody she knew was going to be here. Lydia girl, it, it ain't looking good for you acting like you didn't know Uche was going to be here. It's, it's just not looking good for you, girl. And then Aaliyah said the second thought she had was that they had both both planned to be there. And listen, it's a bit far fetched. But do I believe it's impossible? No, I don't. I don't believe that it's not impossible that Uche and Lydia could have been in on this whole thing. And he was like, what do you mean? And then our friends are just going to act like they never seen each other. And then our family and whatever. Well, yeah, people do it all the time. People do it all the time. <laughs> it's called lying real good. OK, so it's possible. Aaliyah tells him that she regrets what she did and the foundation that they built. She thinks it is worth trying. Uche says that he still has has doubts. And then he essentially gaslights her in this moment of saying, you know, I see my parents go through so many things. And what we went through in the pod was like musical chairs to them. So like, don't you I hate it when men try to flip the script and really like downplay the feelings of women and how something may not be a really big deal to them, but it's a big deal to a woman. Like don't try to downplay what you did and everything that she experienced with you and Lydia going back and forth and telling her all this information to act like, Oh, but that's nothing compared to what marriage really is. Well, we ain't married yet. And this situation is a big something for me. Okay. That's what Aaliyah should have said. All right. This man is just unbelievable child. And then he dumps it all on her that you blocked me then you unblocked me you sent me a voice note and then you took the vo voice note back i had no way to get in touch with you for 48 hours alia and who cares uchi you really didn't need to be able to get in touch with her at all in my opinion like whatever but he says he kept checking her ig and then eventually i guess she unblocked him and he tells her that the real reason she left is because she didn't have the confidence in him or their relationship and it had nothing to do with Lydia. Uche, the last time I checked, I thought the, the bio for you said that you were a lawyer and not a therapist. I just don't know why you always feel the need to constantly be reading her and telling her how she really feels despite what she is telling you. You are not her therapist and nobody asked you to tell you how you think she really feels like he has done that so many times to her when she has made comments on different things. And he's like, no, that's not it. That's because X, Y, and Z. No, it's because of what she's saying coming out of her mouth. Uche. How about that? Like this man is just, I don't like him. Um, but he says he thinks what they have is over. And I said, thank goodness. And he does not want to go any further, which I think all of us is cool with that. So Stacy goes to Izzy's house to check it out. Um, she's definitely giving unsolicited advice. And then he shows her a little lost and found section that he has next to the condoms. It's some rings, it's some bracelets, you know, little trinkets and odds and ends that he has from the women he's had a rendezvous with. And I'm like, oh, Izzy, well, why do you still have these things? Like you can keep an earring or a bracelet, you know, probably 
I say a week max from maybe messing with somebody just in case they reach back out to you and say, hey, did I leave my, you know, Kate Spade bracelet over there? Can you meet me somewhere and get that back to me? OK, but if it's been weeks and months and they have not asked for it back and you don't even remember who it belongs to. Throw it away immediately. Just toss it like it's not that serious, Izzy. Um, then they go to his kitchen. They have have a whole back and forth about the plastic wear that he has and how he doesn't have no real plates, cups, forks, spoons, knives, everything. And Stacy, it really ain't that serious because people don't be feeling like doing dishes. OK, like why do dishes if you don't have to, girl? Um, but he really kind of seemed annoyed by her comments in the face. And then this issue of the lost and found comes back around again um, because she's like, why do you still have it though? Like before you came to my place, any pictures or any other things that I had up, I went ahead and threw them away. So if you came here, you know, before and you would see everything, why did you leave it here? Because he tells her that, you know, he was at his place. He forgot about it. But then while he was there before she came there, he saw it and he was like, you know, no big deal. I'm not hiding anything from her, which is why he was like, it's no big deal. Rather, it's here or it's not here. I think, yes, Izzy, you could have easily tossed this thing and thrown it away because it's really not that serious to be hanging on to this stuff. But also, Stacy, you did you think he had no interactions with any other woman before he met you in the pod, honey? It is you are putting 20 on 10 right now and I don't appreciate it because how dare you have me going up for Izzy at this moment, okay? <laughs> so Lydia and Milton, we see they go out to eat to meet Lydia's mom and her brother. Milton is nervous to make a good first impression. Um, I just want to say that I think it's a little bit weird that her mom is Lydia Sr. Why do y'all need the same name? But maybe that is a Dominican thing. I, I, I don't know. Um, Milton tells them that basically they really like to have fun and act like kids together, which is how they connected. They talk about wanting three kids. Milton wants two biological kids and maybe adopting one. And Lydia said she agreed to that. Um, the brother co-signs that she is very demanding, AKA bossy. And we already know that. Um, and I do recognize that she, she tells Milton a lot. She doesn't ask him a lot, but she tells him a lot. Um, Throughout this whole scene, I can't even really focus that well because all I can think of is if what everything that Uche said was true, girl, you just out here pulling the wool over Milton's eyes. And does your family not know how crazy you are? <laughs> uh, we then see Izzy meets with Stacy family. Um, it's her parents and then two of her sisters. He tells them that um, basically Stacy knew him from the back of the wall, from the back of a wall, which is how he fell for her and knew she was the one. She says she knew he was the one because she never talked about marriage or wanted to get married um, before him. And they co-signed that. And I was like, so you never really saw yourself getting married or wanted to get married. But then you came on Love is Blind. Will you get married in a month? Giving you the side eye, Stacey. OK, um, one sister essentially kind of asks where he is financially because. Izzy brings up the fact that he just recently got a passport, so he's never been out of the country. He's never even been to California or New York. Um, he says because basically he kind of before didn't have really a financial reason to have a passport like he could not financially afford it. So why even have one if he knew he wasn't going to be able to go anywhere? Um, so, of course, he's only 29. So the sister was saying really kind of your late 20s is when you start really get to get your career together. And Stacy likes to travel. That's no secret. And traveling ain't cheap. So basically, how you planning on doing that? Okay. Um, we then find out that Izzy has a job in insurance. So I think at the bottom it always had like insurance agent or something like that. What we didn't know is that he had basically just got that job not too long ago. He got the job and then went on vacation. He went to work for a few days and then he had to leave again for the pause. So essentially, Izzy don't even know how much money Izzy is making to be able to reassure anybody with how much money he is making. OK, like. OK, we have to talk about Plastic Wear Gate all over again with her family. Like, I can't even believe we talking about this in front of these grown folks. And she's like, you know, I would think he would want to impress me like you wouldn't want to have, you know, real plates. So, girl, he's supposed to go run out from y'all coming home from Mexico, go run out to, you know, a department store or the Target or something and go pick up some plates just to impress you, honey. Girl, be real, Stacy. Be real. You doing all this over some dang on red solo cups and paper plates. Girl, goodbye. 
Um, as they are having this interaction with her family, Izzy looks completely out of place. Like you can tell her family is a bit affluent. Um, they definitely like the finer things when they talk about um, taking the kids at one point to travel to, I believe it was um, Paris for two weeks at one time on a vacation. And you're talking to a guy who just got a passport because he was not able to afford to go out of the country previously. Well, really until recently. So Izzy and Stacy's dad, they go talk um, and Stacy's dad is basically giving the impression that he knows his daughter's a bit of a little bougie diva. And while it's not all about the money, those things basically are not free. Um, Izzy doesn't really, to, in my opinion, give any real answers regarding support because he just started this job. Um, her dad mentioned that there is a certain level that Stacy expects and she doesn't want to go Dutch on dinner. I said... Stacy had already talked to her daddy. She done told her daddy this man talking about going 50 50 with me on dates. We know you, Stacy, you have already <laughs> talked to your daddy because why would he say that? OK, but anyway, easy continues to talk a good game. Oh, he got savings and they'll be all right. Typical F boy ish. OK, um, and then we see the pod squad gets together. So the two couples that we have left standing and then some of the other singles show up. Johnny shows up and we know it's about to be drama. And Carter is looking at Izzy like, you know who that is? That's your own girl, Johnny. Carter, you being messy. <laughs> um, Stacy says that Johnny is a, such a joke because they had such a good time. Um, but then when she started putting two and two together that they were both dating Izzy, I did that before she did. And I really felt bad for Johnny. But of course, when Johnny found out that, you know, he was dating me, then she started being petty towards me. Yeah, we did. It's it's what we see all the time here on Love is Blind. OK, um, and then we found out that after Chris and Johnny ended things in the pod that they connected and now they are actually dating. They are boyfriend and girlfriend. They linked up at the airport and somehow knew that each other was each other without even seeing each other before. And now they go together real bad, child. Um, but Johnny lets us know that Chris is probably the best human she has ever met and she starts to cry. And I said, that's all great and everything, Johnny, but I'm still not all the way on your team. And I don't quite know yet if you deserve Chris. I'm, I'm still on the fence and we'll, we'll see, you know, how this all plays out. I guess if you are really deserving of that man child, but she's happy that he gave her another chance. We then see Johnny talks to Izzy. He says he tells her out the gate. He glad he made the decision that he made because he heard some sketchy things about her. All right. Here come old messy Izzy. Um, he's on his high horse talking about everything she told him versus kind of what she told Chris. Um, in my opinion, through this whole back and forth, I felt like Izzy was just uh, happy that he could stand up to someone because I don't feel like because of um Basically, Stacy would be the breadwinner that he doesn't feel like he can really stand up and talk to her in the way that he was talking to Johnny. I could be completely wrong, but that is the vibe I was getting is that really I'm kind of annoyed with Stacy, but I can't talk to her crazy, especially if I want to be in that family and, you know, benefit from the funds that's happening. So I'm going to talk to you crazy. OK, but um, they are having a whole conversation. He keeps cutting her off and she is trying to talk, which I'm like, ain't this the pot calling the kettle black when you just got in Stacy's behind because she kept cutting you off as you were as you were trying to talk. He said, if I could give you some advice and Johnny was like, no, thank you. I don't need any advice from you. And I was like, yes, Johnny, cut that off right there before he even has anything else to say. And he says, oh, but I think you do because everyone thinks that you're sketchy. Izzy, who is everybody? Who, who is that the same everybody when they like everybody over there who are over there everybody is that the same everybody because I need to know name names if you're gonna say everybody think you sketchy who thinks she's sketchy let us in on the secret okay and then Johnny leaves him sitting there as she should because I quite frankly did not care for the way that Izzy was talking to her um it's too bad that Stacy wasn't able to witness all that because I think you always need to be careful of how men talk to certain people, especially women, because if he can talk to her like that, it's only a matter of time before your turn is going to roll around. And he talks crazy to you. OK, um, she goes back over. Um, Johnny goes back over to Chris. Chris says that, you know, the important people don't think that she is a bad person because she's getting all teary eyed and emotional. 
Easy then goes off with Stacy, and y'all, the way he is pulling her to the side and cackling, he is so proud to tell her that I called her out, and I'm just so grateful for our relationship. Chat, whenever a man starts doing this and doing this overcompensating and saying a whole lot, he lying. And I definitely think Izzy is lying. He is having some regrets. Now, I don't necessarily think he is regretting not choosing Johnny, but I definitely think he's having some regrets with actually choosing Stacy, not choosing himself. Izzy, you a bit trash. You gossip like a woman, okay? And then Uche pops up at the party. Of course, Lydia sees him. He asks her to chat. He tells her that when they first met, you know, of course, outside the pod, it was an instant connection with the two of them. He felt that she really gave him what it was he needed in that moment. He tells her all the things he loved about her as he's doing that. He, she starts to tear up and get emotional. And I realized this in Uchi. Uchi definitely, before he's about to drop a bomb on you, he plays up on your emotions to make you be very soft and vulnerable to him. And then he comes in with the gut punch of whatever it is that he wants to tell you. Like... Men like that, real conniving, real deceitful, like ish like that is just that is just not cool to basically say all these things. Allow a woman to let her guard down and then you come in with the gut punch. That is that is how he moves. Um, but essentially, he gets her wrapped up into an argument about their past experience with each other. Why are we rehashing this when this really has nothing to do with y'all interaction on the show? I don't know. Um, he wants to finish talking. She gets up and walks away from the conversation. Um, they, the other people in the pod sees Milton and they like your girl over there arguing. So Milton then joins them. Uche is like, Milton, do you mind if the two of us just talk? And Milton looks at his phone and he's like, um, but we actually have somewhere to be in about 10 minutes. And I don't really think they did have anywhere to be, but I think Milton was thinking quickly on his toes that he can get them out of this situation by thinking fast. And it told a lot about Lydia that she was like, you know, go ahead. We'll, we'll be right here. Just give me a minute. So you just wanted to keep the mess going because you could have ended it there and just walked out with your fiance and deaded everything. But you wanted to be just as messy, messy and cause a scene as well, Lydia, that girl whatever so then um Uche tells her that what we've already heard she picked out some of his followers started watching their stories sent the, sh the picture of his driveway to him and she was she said she was passing by but I'm, I'm just still confused as to why they are bringing this up now like this is, sounds like some lovers quarrel that y'all should have gotten squared away when y'all broke up the second go around um Lydia does let us know that Uche uh slept with someone else while they were actually dating so that is real funny if he is a cheater as well a recent cheater <laughs> like he said Aaliyah was that would be just that would be real funny real cot, pot calling the kettle black okay but she walks off and she is walking off she is yelling she is cursing she says this will be the last time he will see her face of course everybody else is starting to turn around to see what in the, is actually going on here um and Uche says you know he just wants somebody I think Uche just wants somebody to be unhappy with him. Like you may have cut things off with Aaliyah, but it's because I believe you wanted to be in control and you felt you were in control because you made a decision to cut her off versus being able to be vulnerable with her and trying again and then her potentially hurting you. It's per pretty much a, de a defense mechanism that I feel like he's doing right now. Um, but that's where it leaves off. And then we see that he's then going to want to talk to Milton one on one without Lydia as well. Like why? I guess because we only got two couples. Production is just letting just whatever happened happen. And here we are with the Uche and Lydia featuring Milton show, I guess, child. Anyway, y'all, this video is super long. Once I've had combined er everything. So if you have made it to the very end, thank you so much. <laughs> for watching this video but i i just did not want to break everything down child if you've seen episodes one through seven then hopefully you've sat here and listened to everything and we'll catch back up with some shorter videos on the rest of the the season that we have with the episodes that will come up in the following weeks please let me know what y'all thought about this season so far in the comment section below of course like i said thumbs up the video and subscribe to the channel i'll catch y'all in the next one Phew. peace <laughs>